Hello, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to our Tuesday leadership call. My name is Twin. If you guys don't know who I am, um, I am a 200K leader here with Lavelle. I've been with Lavelle for about five and a half years. And let me tell you, this has been the best five and a half years of my life. It flew by because when you love what you do and you're having so much fun, it really doesn't feel like work. So time really does fly here, right? Um, I love this Tuesday leadership call. I mean, it was it's one of the best call I think of the week because on here, we just learn so much about a promoter and their journey and their struggles, their highs, their lows, their wins, their ups and their downs. So if you guys please, please don't ever miss a call like this because you just learned so much. Um, and today I actually get to interview one of my very own. Her name is Eleni Tam. And when you hear her story, um, we always say this, like Thrive changes your life, right? If you guys have been thriving, you guys know that it has done something positive and impacted your life in a positive way. But when you hear stories, how someone's life can do a 180 overnight. Literally, this is um, Eleni's story. So I'm super excited to introduce her. And she just hit her 40K rank bonus. So congratulations. That is an amazing achievement. And not only that, she's going to tell you what else she has earned here with Lavelle as well. And trust me, you guys, she has earned a lot. Lavelle has given her so much, but she has worked so hard for it. She's definitely someone that I would say deserve everything that she has had so far. So Elaine, if you're there, unmute yourself and introduce yourself to everyone, please. Hi, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Tuesday's Leadership Zoom. I'm going to apologize in advance because I am still battling a cold. So if I have a coughing fit, I am going to mute myself and take myself off video. Still struggling from Miami. So <clears throat> a little bit about myself. Um, as Twin said, my name is Elaney. Um, I'm 27 years old. I live in Las Vegas and I've been with Lavelle coming on to three years um, next month. So this is a super exciting because I think the last time I was on this call was probably a year or two years ago. So telling my story again, and then while I was writing notes, I just discovered there's been so much more that's been added to my journey. And I'm really excited to share with you guys because just like she mentioned, um, there is no success story without struggle. So, um, you know, it's really nice to kind of dig deep and get to know um, these leaders that get to be on these Zooms. And this is actually one of my favorite calls that we host. So just a little bit about myself. Um, prior to Thrive, I was a retail manager. Um, I was not a very strong student growing up, um, unlike a lot of like Asian families or <laughs> typical Asian stereotype. Um, I was like against the stereotype and I was one of those um, kids who loved to hang out with my friends. I didn't love to study as much as my brothers did. And so I knew that in order to prove to my parents, I had to work really hard and show my success in different ways other than schooling. So um, as soon as I graduated high school, I tried community college for a few years. Um, I was always a leader in everything that I did. Um, so I was like student body president and I worked full time and I just realized that school wasn't for me and that I was going to take the working route. And so I became a retail manager. I worked my way up to um, almost the top of <laughs> the top of the store and I helped um, open up so many stores with that company. I was with them for seven years and it taught me a lot. Um, during the pandemic, if you guys know, retail was actually hit one of the hardest and in-person jobs were hit the hardest. So I actually lost my job and um, losing my job after being with the company for seven years without severance really gave me a huge reality check that made me realize there was no job security in my field and I needed a backup plan. And at that time, it was already kind of too late to have a backup plan, right? I don't know how many of you guys also went through similar struggles during the pandemic, but when they say it rains, it storms like that, or when it rains, it pours like that time of my life literally had like the most emotional havoc. And I always look back to the moment, like the only reason why I was put through that storm was because a um, great change was about to happen. And um, during that month, I lost my job. Um, my grandma unexpectedly passed away um, two weeks of me returning home. And I was literally dealing with grief and also trying to go through a transition within myself that I had never experienced before. And I actually went through like major depression. 
And um, it was in that moment when I started to notice that I had a lot of health struggles. So a few years prior to that, probably in my early 20s, I started to realize I was having a lot of stomach issues. And um, at the time, I didn't know what it was, but it was during that time during the pandemic when I had lost my job that I was starting to realize like one, my hair was thinning and at 25 years old as a woman, um, noticing that my hair was thinning that was like a huge like red flag to me that something was wrong with my body and so um I was dealing with that so obviously yeah I'm like dealing with grief I'm dealing with the transition I'm like insecure about my face my body my hair just everything was just not going right and in that time it was when Angela uh, my sponsor she actually reached out to me and she mentioned to me uh, well I had been watching her thrive for about a year at this point and she had shared with me you know like hey like I, I, I don't know what's going on but I can sense you're going through something and if I can be of any help I would really like to offer you a solution. And I was like, mm, like, she doesn't even know what I'm going through. Like, what do you mean she can offer a solution? And so I kind of like was taken back from her response. And I remember she was just like, well, do you trust me? Like, do you trust me to give you a solution to what you're going through? And I'm like, I mean, at this point I've lost everything. So I don't really know what else I can lose. So sure. Um, and a little bit to that too, when I say nothing to lose, at that point, once I had left uh, or once I had been let go from my job, I wasn't given a severance. And I also had just moved um, a year prior to that. So I wasn't recognized in either state um, to collect unemployment. So I literally was left with no job, no income and a ton of bills. And I don't know if you guys have ever been in that position, but it's very, very stressful. So that was the whole reason why I had come back to my parents' house. And so uh, when she had like said, you know, do you trust me? I was like, yeah, sure. Like at this point, like I really have nothing to lose. And so I had a hundred dollars left in my bank account. Um, the hundred dollars was meant for bills, but I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go all in. And she actually paid for the rest of my package for the month. And, um, this is kind of one of those things where you have to realize like the greatest rewards sometimes come from the greatest risks. And at that point, I had a lot to lose. Like I literally had nothing um, to my name left. And I mean, I could have like asked my parents for help, right? But they too were also struggling. And um, I will say like that was probably one of the best investments that I've ever made for myself. And so um, since then, um, you know, a lot has happened. So let's kind of walk through the timeline. Um, but basically, um, I at that point, once I had already ordered, I was open to the change, but not fully. And that was something I had to kind of admit to myself, because once the products came, I didn't take them correctly on purpose. And that was because I was against the change. And I don't know if you guys have noticed this or, you know, dealt with this in your own promoter journeys. But you know, when somebody is not open to changing, it really makes it hard um, for them to accept that change is happening. And so, you know, all changes that happen outwardly always happen first inwardly. And that's something that we have to remind ourselves is that, you know, when we're walking through someone through a, a first time experience, it really comes back to like, are they open to a mindset change? Are they open to accept what's going to happen in the next 30 days or 60 days of their life, right? And so um, in that time, I wasn't ready. And so um, I was taking the products incorrectly. And it was even like taking it incorrectly, though, I was still noticing something that was happening that was different. And so for me, because I realized that I had IBS, um, I struggled with bloating a lot. And obviously, I shared with you guys, I had I was struggling with hair loss as well. And so in those first um, three weeks, I had noticed that my hair was growing back within the first 10 days. And then also that my bloating was going down, even though I wasn't making a diet change. And so that was huge for me because my parents are restaurant owners and we eat good. <laughs> like our bonding is through food. So there was not a day during the pandemic that I never like had anything to eat. And so like I was eating not the greatest and still seeing results. So I was like, okay, like something is happening, but I kind of still want to see like what's going on. So towards the end of that third week, I reached out to her and I was like, hey, like I only have one week left. I don't know what to do now because you took my last hundred dollars. I don't have money to pay for this again. And I need these products because I realized like I also wasn't like napping throughout the day. And during the pandemic, because we were on lockdown, there was really nothing to do. So I just slept and ate all day, which is why I gained that pandemic weight. Um, and so she reached, she reached back out and she was like, hey, you know, uh, you can actually get these products for free. Just tell two people about it. And I was like, in my head, I was like, 
how am I going to tell two people that like vitamins like changed my life? Like you sound ridiculous. I like, we're in a pandemic, like no one's going to believe me. Everyone's broke. Like, what are you like talking about? And, but then in my mind, like I had already created so much value on how my body and how my mind felt and how different I felt before from before I started my Thrive experience up to the three weeks that I literally just said, you know what, like, I ha- again, I have nothing to lose. So I'm just going to share. And if it's an opportunity to be free, like I'm going to take that opportunity. So I got back on Instagram after being on a hiatus for a while and I just shared and it was scary guys, like sharing your story and sharing your transformation is so scary, especially when, you know, you have been dealing with things and people don't know, right? Like we always say like social media is like the highlight reel of all of our life and like all the high points, right? But what I asked myself was, you know, if I'm struggling with this, like out loud, like imagine how many people were struggling, like in silence, you know, like I was going through it and like, you know, some people could tell, And if she could tell, right, I hadn't even told her like what was going on in my life and she could tell, like imagine how many other people were going through the same things like during that time. And so uh, when I started sharing my story, I gained, you know, a little bit more confidence every single time being more vulnerable. And I was able to find very easily, almost like within the first two days, um, people that also were going through it and wanted, you know, help with bloating or, you know, mental clarity or whatever they were going through. And I was able to find my first two. And she was like, look how easy that was, right? Like you should take on this opportunity. And I'm like, opportunity, like now there's more, like it just kept going. Right. And that was one thing that I really appreciated about her was because she didn't overwhelm me with too much information in the beginning. It was just leading me to the next step of whatever my journey was. And so in that moment when she was like opportunity, I'm like, no, like I'm not taking on like an MLM. Like I have like history with this. I know about this. Um, my mom was actually in an MLM prior and she never saw success with it. And so I was just like really against it. But, you know, again, I thought to myself, like I could either go back to work and I could start applying for jobs, but no one's hiring right now for whatever I do, or I could just do this and it might be hard for the first few weeks or months or whatever and I could have like amazing change right so I was like I had watched her for a year and she kind of had a similar transformation where like she didn't have any background and she was still successful so I'm like you know what again I have nothing to lose I'm just going to go all in and so um at that time we didn't have VIP 400 and so we had VIP 800 I ran for it and I got it and I got my first paycheck and I think the first paycheck in between that like it was like 30 bucks or something and this is recorded so I guess you can't really share whatever um income disclosures but the second check when I got the um 800 bonus um the VIP 800 bonus is when I was like oh crap like I just made in one week what I would have made like working 40 hours at my old job And that like dawned on me, like, this is a free opportunity. I never had to go to education. I never had training for this. I didn't have to do anything but show up and show up for other people and help myself feel confident and continue to help others feel confident. And this was something that I felt aligned with. So I just ran with it. And guys, I was really just ignorant, (laughs) like ignorance on fire. Like I had no idea like what I was like getting myself into and I'll kind of share like how that led me into some trouble like you know later on but you know just running with passion because I realized again I just kept going back to that you know um that feeling of I if I was struggling with this like outwardly like other people were struggling silently and if I could help tell their story or make their story just a little bit easier I was going to do that and that's what I was going to devote um my promoter journey to And so um, I remember like getting on my first three-way call and Jackie was on it as well. And she was like, you know, you're in Vegas and there's nobody really like huge in Vegas yet. Like you could take over that city. And I'm like, I don't even know anybody in Vegas. Like if you guys know me actually now, like majority of my team is not even in Vegas. Um, But it's so funny that she like instilled that in me. And I was like, okay, like, you know what? I'm just going to take that with a grain of salt and I'm just going to, you know, figure it out. And um, 
yeah, like I just kept sharing every single day. And the way that I really grew my business in the beginning was just getting samples out. I would buy a package of, you know, my first promoter package and I would just sell it off in like, you know, days of samples. And at one point, like I was sending out so many samples a week that the mailman was getting tired of like taking my individual packages. And he just like left the carrier there. And he was like, just put it in there. Cause like, I'm not going to just, you know, keep on taking all these individual packages. And like, I lived um, on a set of stairs and he was like dropping them all the time so it was like really funny um but yeah like I was sending out probably like 10 samples like you know like every other day and you know I would like make wait lists for people um that wanted them and so yeah like I grew my business that way and I was just on fire and I didn't stop and I also was working almost probably like 12 hours a day to be honest um, you know, it was really humble beginnings. I was uh, in the transition of like moving at that time as well. So I literally had this small like little like uh, lap desk that I would work from on the floor. And I would even do all my Zoom calls from there. Um, I literally packaged all my samples like on the floor with whatever I had, like Ziploc bags or whatever. And I just kept sharing. And um, in my first four months, I actually climbed up to uh, the second top rank of the company and I went 80K in four months. And uh, it was just wild. Like when I tell you guys, I literally was just so ignorant. Every single day I was getting about 10, like every other day I was getting about 10 samples out, but like my entire schedule was like booked with like three-way calls and, you know, onboarding calls and Zoom calls like every single day. I just made it a non-negotiable that if I wanted to see results, I was going to work this business like I had a regular 40 hour job and I was going to put in 40 hours a week um, to make my business grow. And that's what I did. And I actually put in overtime, right? And it definitely paid out that way. So during that time, um, there was also a car contest that was happening with the company and they haven't done it since. And I don't know, maybe they will. They, they've surprised us every single year with whatever bonuses that they bring back, right? Um, but at the time they had put out a car bonus, which basically was uh, the top 40 producers. And it wasn't just personal PPA, it was team PPA. So that meant like, not only do you have to find customers of your own, you have to help. I think it was like your first four levels um, also find PPA of their own. And so obviously, right, like that's like changing a hat from like being a personal, you know, recruiter to also like being able to motivate and teach people how to do that, like duplicated leadership. And so I had to kind of switch back and forth all day long, like, okay, I'm helping people, you know, get on Thrive, but I'm also helping other people learn how to get people on Thrive. And um, yeah, we just kept going. And I, like, like I said, my, my days were filled with Zoom calls all day long. And um, I actually held the number one spot for almost all of the competition. Um, and, but that was, it was funny because it still didn't guarantee you a car. Like the first 40 spots was still put into a raffle. So it was like, I was still working as hard and yeah, it was like motivation, but at the same time, it was like, it wasn't guaranteed that I was going to get a result. And I told myself, you know, don't, don't fixate this result um, based off your, if you're going to get a car or not, because you've already gained a lot from just having this free opportunity, right? And so I remember during that time, like I was working so much that I was starting to feel kind of burnt out, like towards the end of that uh, third or fourth month. And um, I think I, the, they were going to announce the car winners and stuff. So I flew back to uh, California and uh, Ange threw kind of like a little party at her house with other promoters who were also running in it. And we just kind of had a watch party together. And like when Paul got onto the call to announce it, like they obviously, I just like couldn't wrap my mind around like what was happening. Like, like our company really just like devoted like eight cars to people who just do their job, right? Like I worked for other companies for like seven plus years. I never once got like more than a 2.5 what percent increase like of income like the next year. Like how could they just like give cars? Now mind you, I have a car that works, it's functions. Like I was, I didn't need a car, um, but I was just like so flabbergasted that they did this. And so they were announcing it. The first person got called, everyone was cheering. And I was just so in shock that by the time he called my name, I just had no reaction. Like I didn't know what to feel, what to do. I was like, is this even real? Like, I don't know. So I got called the second and um, basically they had emailed all of the uh, winners and said, you know, you get your option to pick. And so I decided to pick the black Range Rover. 
that was actually my dream car. And um, yeah, it just it still didn't feel real though. And so when I flew back to Vegas, I was like telling people, I was telling my family, I was like, you guys, like I want a car. And they were like, no, you didn't like, or like, you know, like why, why did you pick that car? Like, it's going to be so like um, expensive to maintain and things like that. And when I first started this business, I didn't really have like a lot of support from my you know family and friends. And that was okay. Right. I didn't let that like stop me. Um, but yeah, it, it still kind of didn't feel real. And so um, I remember the day that the car got delivered. Um, I had actually put um, my friend's address because the area that I lived in like wasn't safe enough for the car to be delivered. And so I remember that day they told me like I had been in um, connection with like Cami and some of like people from uh, like HR and stuff. And they were like sharing like, okay, the car's gonna get delivered and whatever. And the day that I got a random phone call, um, like I wasn't prepared that the car was going to get delivered that day. So I remember I kept getting these missed calls from a 702 number and um, I finally answered it like after I had got off Zoom or something and he was like, I'm like, hey, I'm going to be like at your house in like 10 minutes with the car. And I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm in my pajamas right now. Like I don't, I don't have, I'm like not even there. It's all the way across town. And I was just like freaking out. And I was like telling my friend like, hey, are you home? Like they're going to drop off the car. Like, you know, like I don't know and whatever. So I like rushed over there. I remember like just feeling all these feelings like going over there. Like, like, is this real life? Like I just took on this opportunity four months ago and they're gifting me a brand new car, a fully paid Range Rover. And like, I, I still get paid like doing this like every single week. And, and like crazy enough, right? Like I get to work for my pajamas. Like I shouldn't even like, shower that day. Like I was just a hot mess, but it was like, how is this real? And I, I got there. And the funny thing is like the guy who delivered the car, he didn't even like stop and like say hi to me. Like he had, was already down the street, like left already, like just handed the keys over to my friend. And I like ran in and I was like, oh my gosh, like, did they say anything about the car? And she was like, no, like he just handed me the keys. And I'm like, okay, cool, whatever. And the car came and we decided to take a few pictures of it and stuff. And we're like, okay, let's just like test drive it. And you guys, I had never touched anything of that value ever in my life. And so I didn't know what to do with it. Like, I just didn't know how to feel. I was so in shock. And I remember taking some pictures and it was kind of like reflects back like later on um, to like some symbolism in that time. But we took some pictures and stuff. And I remember around the time I had looked out on my phone and um, the time was like 444. And if you guys know anything about angels, numbers and stuff like that or if you believe in it like up until this day or up until the day that the car got delivered I was asking for a sign I was like is this really like real like is this is this something that I can do for a long time is this something that is going to stay like am I going to stay successful like what like I've never experienced this before like I don't know like how real this is and I was having like some doubt you know like to be real I was having some doubt and you know I had obviously outside people telling me things like my family and friends weren't necessarily supportive of it and so I remember taking that picture and like I as soon as we figured out the car stuff we took it for a drive I went home and I kind of was just like in my feelings and I just kind of like just take a moment to like have gratitude and just kind of be still in the moment and I looked through the pictures and there was like a ray of like light that was coming from behind the car and I remember like looking at it I was like wow like that's so weird like the sun is like so bright but like that's so weird that you can see like the rays coming out and so um, you guys know that I lost my grandma like earlier that that year and I remember the last thing she said to me before she passed was like take care of your family and make sure that you you know like take care of your dad and which was her her son and so I was just like oh, so weird like I don't know and so I looked up the numbers of what 444 meant and basically it was like blessings from your ancestors for your career and so that was the moment that I was like okay like I'm okay here. Like this was a blessing. This was a sign from her that you know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. And even if my parents don't believe me right now, that what I'm doing is like going to you know make me successful. Like I'm gonna prove it to them. I'm gonna show them. And so that year, that Christmas, I remember, um, you know, like guys, like my I had never touched that amount of money ever before in my life. Like 
the checks that I was getting was literally just a reflection of how many people and how fast I was helping them. And so that Christmas, I was actually able to gift my dad his dream car. And um, you guys can follow me on Instagram, um, but I have the video pinned. And um, I remember, again, just knowing that I could give back to my dad after so many years of him, you know, working so hard and endlessly to provide for our family that, you know, this was something that I was, I was able to do. And I wouldn't have had that opportunity had I not, you know, taken this opportunity for myself or taken that risk, right? Like, uh, because I was able to invest that last hundred dollars, because I was able to take that risk, you know, a really huge reward came from that. And I was never going to allow that opportunity to ever slip away from me if I could. So that was kind of like the first like six months of the business. Um, it was a crazy roller coaster. It was so wild. Like at that time also, like we didn't have any lifestyle getaways. And so literally like I wasn't being motivated by any type of like incentive other than the fact that one, this provided a free opportunity for me to earn money that I never would have had like staying where I was. Um, and yeah, so I guess it wasn't up until Christmas day. Um, I think I had like two days to find and locate the car. Cause obviously you guys know that LaBelle has, you know, requirements for what, um, auto auto or what cars are, um, uh, included in the auto bonus. Um, but during that year, because it was a pandemic, there was like limit production of like what styles were out. And so we were able to locate one and it was like about two to three hours away from my house. So I literally planned a trip to drive back home. Uh, we picked up the car, we did all the paperwork and we hit it. We hit the car for like three days. Um, and then Christmas morning, after everyone opened up presents, um, my dad was the last person to receive his gift. And we actually pulled a prank on him and we gave him a license plate and um somebody like joked around in the background and was like oh like it's for your new car and he was like and obviously he like didn't know what was coming but um as soon as he like opened it like I, I like handed him the keys and I'm like no like really like this is for your new car and so he stepped outside and he saw the car and he was literally in tears and if you guys like know dads like they're so hard to like show emotion especially like immigrant fathers like immigrant Asian fathers um and so this was probably like one of like three times I've ever seen him cry so hard in my life, but he literally was just in shambles and um, was so thankful and so grateful, so appreciative of his truck. Um, it was something that he had always wanted and he had shared with me that, you know, like forever, like he's always wanted a car um, or a truck like this, but he never had the means to, you know, buy it for himself because he was providing for our family and we have a pretty large family. So you know, uh, this was really rewarding to give back to him. And yeah, so like the year following, it was just, it was just so many things that happened, right? Like then like the incentives and I, that's when I started to really catch the vision of like the business as a community. Um, you know, I went to my first, um, lifestyle getaway in Cabo and I actually got invited as a plus one to go to the VIP event at Jason Kemper's house. And I think at the time he had just finished like building. And so it was really cool to like, you know, be like invited to my CEO's house. Like I've never met any of my other CEOs for any other company. And to be invited to my CEO's house, that was like really special to me. And I like was able to talk to him and he was a real person. And I was like, wow, like this is so crazy. Like, you know, not am I just amazed about the opportunity, like the money and you know, everything that I've been able to do here, but like like the people that we work for like actually care about us and they are actual real people and you know. I remember like um, being at the house and he was taking his time to kind of like say hi to everyone and just express gratitude. And I remember him coming over to us and, you know, um, this is like something that I always tell my team, like if you meet somebody that's like inspirational to you, never miss that opportunity to ask them a question. And so uh, I remember he was like coming over to us and we we're like thinking like, okay, what should we ask him? And um, I remember asking him like, what made him, or what was like um, his success uh, tips for a successful marriage or his relationship, right? And he was like, um, I picked somebody that one was going to like come with me on my journey, but also like um, that wasn't going to be stressed, going to be stressful to my journey. And so she's, and he was like sharing with us like very just real like things that people deal with, right? Like, cause you know, in this business, sometimes our partners don't really understand like what we pick up and where we're going or what this whole new thing is. And so I just thought that was really cool that he was a real person. He was very human-like. And so yeah, just sharing like little tidbits and stuff like that. 
it was really cool. And then, you know, my vision just continued to grow, like, especially after Palo my first Palooza. Um, that first Palooza, I was actually on stage with a few other people and for the fastest growth award. And like, again, just an amazement of how much acknowledgement this company gives to people who work hard, but not only people who work hard, people that try, like, they recognize effort. And that was something that I really stood by because working in management and other companies before, like knowing that you can do so much and not be recognized, like how did my last company leave me with no severance, no nothing after dedicating seven years of my life? Like that was seven years of holidays, seven years of weekends, like so much lost time. And like here, not only did I get time back, my life back, more opportunity back, like they gave me acknowledgement for all that I was doing. And it was just so crazy to me. And I remember like just being in tears, like after Palooza was over, like I literally like, sat in the closet of like our team Airbnb and I just like cried for like hours because I was just like shook. And I also just like, it still didn't feel real. And so um, to be honest, like after that time we had soared up to like 120k like that was like the, our highest production month like ever um because they had just announced operation winning also and it was just so much and so overwhelming and I think that around that time was kind of when I also experienced my the the biggest successes and also the most money that I've ever touched in my life but also some of the biggest losses that I've ever dealt with also um and I'll kind of like go into that in a little bit but you know like um in this business, it really is all about protecting your mindset. And especially with, you know, a job that doesn't give you, you know, specific daily tasks to do. Um, like no one's micromanaging you. No one's hovering over you telling that you have to do this. It really does take a lot of, you know, um, self-motivation. And you guys know that motivation is a fleeting feeling. So, you know, the really only thing that you can depend on is like creating consistent habits. And so for me, I wasn't, I didn't have consistent habits in my normal life that it was starting to show in my business. And so, um, just like I said, you know, I had sort up, like I had never seen this much success. I felt different. It was, there's so many things happening. There's so many changes happening that my personal life wasn't matching. And so I kind of had to have a reality check with myself and ask myself like, Hey, like, you know, what you're doing and where you're going, um, some things aren't matching up and it's creating resistance. So either one, you have to take some time to kind of reflect and ask yourself what's going on or, um, if the success is going to fall back. And so I remember that summer, um, I had, you know, an amazing time. Like I traveled to so many places, like I had never had more freedom to travel everywhere. And, um, I remember coming home from one of my trips and I just felt so like empty and I didn't know why I was trying to figure it out. I, I, I was like, I have everything that I've ever wanted. Right. Like I've seen the, the, the dollars in my bank account. I've never like had this much opportunity and freedom, but it was like an emptiness that I couldn't explain. Um, and I just remember like feeling really lost. And it was like, I, I, I knew that all the self-development that I was like doing like for the business was working, right? Like my business was still like working and it was still soaring. But I remember like um, doing a one-on-one -on -one with like Ange and she pulled me and she was like, you know, like, I don't think you need to do the um, self-development with your business. I think you need to do self-development within yourself. And so that gave me another huge reality check. Like, what do you mean? Like, I'm doing all the right things. Like I, I, I'm doing all the Zooms. I, I'm learning. I'm like on podcasts all the time. And it was literally strictly about business. But I realized at that point, like I had taken Thrive as an identity and I had no identity for myself. And so that was a problem because you guys have to realize like when people come into your business or come in or sign with you as a promoter, they're doing it because they know, like, and trust you. And I was realizing that in that moment, I didn't know myself, I didn't like myself, and I didn't trust myself. And it was because I only had Thrive to show for it. And so um, that summer, I actually hired a coach, a self-love coach, and I did a lot of reflection. And that whole entire like six months that I was working with her, I did a lot of deep reflection. And I realized that a lot of the roadblocks that I was hitting in my business were because of my personal life. And it was because that one, 
I had a lot of limiting beliefs. I had a lot of limiting beliefs coming from, you know, an immigrant family and being the eldest daughter that, you know, like I was tying my success to ranks in the company, right? How many times have we been like, oh, well, we dropped rank. So like, I'm not as successful anymore, or maybe I'm red legged. So I'm not as successful as anymore. And the thing about this business is that there are going to be waves and you have to be able to ride them, right? We see high points, we see mountaintops, but we also see lows and you have to be able to be strong enough to ride those. And so, um, yeah, like I was just realizing a lot with that coach, like that coach pointed out a lot of blind spots to me and was like, you know, like um, you're not really in tune with yourself, you're overworking and you're not finding solutions because you have no time to let your mind rest. Like you are constantly in production mode that you don't know how to find more solutions in your personal life and you can't create new habits because you don't have time to do that and you're not creating time for it. And so I had to realize like I had to check kind of shift my priorities a little bit and um, figure out like what wasn't aligning. And so that year, um, that was like 2021, um, I realized that there, um, I was going through a lot of things. I, I had experienced my first uh, loss of a business partner. Like I didn't know, like I dropped a whole entire 40K leg. Uh, I never knew that that was gonna happen. I didn't know how to feel about it. And I was like, oh crap, like reality check again. Like, okay, I gotta keep going, right? I gotta figure out like how to get over this. But it wasn't just like the numbers that I was like getting over. It was like also like loss of friendship, right? Loss of a business partner, like how to deal with that. And, you know, people don't really talk about that. And so of course, like first, time being an entrepreneur like that was an experience that I had never gone through so I was like grieving it but also realizing like I didn't know how to grieve like you know and so that was also something that my coach had pointed out to me was like you know like when you're going through a loss of something it doesn't necessarily have to be a person or like a living person's like life right like grief comes in a lot of different ways and the grief never gets smaller but your life around it just gets bigger and so um I had dealt with a lot of grief already, like on my journey and I just hadn't experienced it and I hadn't like let it out. And so in those six months, I probably did the most crying that I've ever done in my life. Um, but just giving myself the space to feel everything that I felt on my journey that I hadn't allowed myself to yet. And just realizing like, you know, this business is work around our life and you guys have to make time for your life because whatever you don't take care of in your personal life, it will show in your business. And, um, obviously like I was like seeing that a lot. Like I even like remember like during that time, like uh, I was like trying to ask myself, like how come none of my promoters that I'm signing now are like consistent? Like, why are they not you know, like, like it was like in the beginning, like, why isn't it like the same? And I kept comparing myself to a version that I wasn't anymore. And I had to realize like, there are seasons to this business again, right? Like you have to adapt to the new seasons. And I can't keep thinking about who I was in the past, because it's not allowing me to step into who I am becoming, right? And so, um, yeah, there was a lot of radical change and it just really took a lot of time for self-development. So, you know, if you guys are struggling in your business or maybe you're coming back from a tough season of life or whatever it is, like just remind yourself, you know, like sometimes the self-development we have to do is not necessarily in our business. It's literally within our life and um, it's okay. We all go through it. Um, and we always say like, we're here for all the seasons. We're going to go through life together, um, but you just have to make time for it. Right. And there's no such thing as balance. Uh, there's there's no such thing as having, you know, everything completed. It's just what, what you make time for and what you prioritize. And it's okay to admit that some things are not a priority to you right now, but I promise like once you kind of work through those things, it will um, build your confidence to be able to uh, reflect in all areas of your life. And um, as I kind of worked through that time, um, I saw a lot of success come back in different ways. And this time I didn't relate my success to a rank or to a, um, an accolade or anything. It was how much growth that I had come into. And so I remember a lot of that journey from 80K to, you know, trying to get to 200, I kept asking myself, like, the first four months were so easy. Like, why is the road to 200K so hard? Like, there's so much that I'm not understanding and I'm not getting. And I remember, like, just reminding myself, like, 
the reason why things aren't happening is probably because I'm not ready to accept the challenges that come at that level, right? And if we know anything about this business, every single time you hit a new level, and I'm not even saying rank, like a new level into this business, it comes with new challenges. And the higher and the longer you've been here, it's, it's even more, right? You just get better at putting out the fires. You get faster at putting out the fires. And, um, you know, you have a different mindset. You have a stronger mindset to it. And so, um, yeah, 2021 was just, it was just a crazy year. Like I said, like I had the highest successes, but I also felt the lowest within myself. And after working with somebody and trying to, you know, kind of like um, figure out my blind spots in my business and in my personal life, um, I released a lot of those things that were like blocking me from accepting my blessings. And I think that that's why 22 was uh, such a radical year of change for me. And um, I remember like being at Palooza and Palooza actually fell on my birthday that year or last year. And so I remember like sitting in the crowd and I was like, seeing all these 200Ks like walk up and stage again. I'm like, this still feels so inspirational, but like, I don't want to let another year pass by where I'm still in the same seat. Like, I don't want to be in the same seat watching other people like celebrate this because I know like how hard it can be, but I know it's so worth it. And I remember um, Chastity got on stage and I remember she was dealing with a huge loss that year and she got on stage and she was sharing a little bit and that panel that she was on, I think it was just about community and showing up for each other. And I just reminded myself, you know, like this business has so much to offer and it has so much to offer in so many ways, right? One, we all came in as a customer. It offers a product. It offers a solution to the things that we've been through or things that we've gone through and we need help for, right? But not only that, it gives us an opportunity to have an option, right? In 2022, I actually took the time and realized that, you know, like um, I was spending a lot of time at home and I don't have kids or a partner. So I was kind of going through like, um, just going ballistic, like in the house all the time, like not knowing what to do with myself. And uh, so I picked up like kind of a side job to like talk to people again, to, like have social interaction. And I just realized like, you know, and again, in that season, like that's what I needed. And um, just going back to like Palooza and just like, seeing that community, right? Like I didn't need to go back to work because I needed money or needed resources. I was able to do that because I had an option to choose uh, if I wanted to go back to work. And that's a blessing a lot of people don't have. And so um, I, again, just like stress so much, like this, this opportunity provides so much and you really have to lean into it, right? Like we're all gonna go through seasons of life. That's one thing that we can't change is that change is gonna happen, but it makes it a lot easier when you don't have to go through it alone and that you have a whole entire community and, you know, entire company that supports your growth. You know, um, company that isn't growing wouldn't devote this much time or money to help you guys um, hit these rank advancement bonuses or even just give an opportunity basically like a restart, right? Like uh, the, the fact that they brought back the VIP restarts or giving more opportunity. Like, you know, we had VIP 800 and 1600 for so long. Now that you're like, they're making it even simpler every single time. Like at any time that a company is listening to the complaints or to the feedback of their team, that's a company that's willing to grow with them. And so you guys, we have something so special here. Like um, that's why I like never, you know, like steered my loyalty anywhere else because I'm just forever grateful. And when you remain grateful, like they will, it'll pay back uh, tenfold in abundance. And um, yeah, so, you know, I'm so grateful that they brought back this rank advancement season. Um, I, I did obviously have to kind of step into, you know, a different way of thinking coming into this rank advancement advancement I had learned from my mistakes in the past right like um, sometimes the faster we grow the, the the faster we fall right so I had to learn what things didn't work last time or the other rank advancement times and I applied that this time and I think it stuck and um and yeah just leaning into your resources you know you have an entire community an entire back office that has so much free resource and like obviously if they're providing this much they want you to learn right um even just like the new announcement they had from Miami about um, the new uh, learning tools in the app, right? You guys have something at your hands like to learn so easily. Like this is product knowledge that I would teach before to my old associates. Like it's so easy to learn. It's so um, tangible. It's so easy to duplicate, um, utilize the resources. 
and know what you have here you guys it's it's so so special what we have here and honestly own your story like you really there's nothing else to to a leadership story it's it's really leaders are people who do it fast or do it first um we're no different than any other people we all have a story we all have trauma we all come from different backgrounds and walks of life but own your story and tell it with confidence because you are that shining light for somebody who is looking for you and um just as much as you are looking for other people like uh they're looking for you too so don't give up on yourself yet <laughs> Oh my goodness, I love that you literally took the whole Zoom over. I didn't even have to ask you any question and you just freaking answered all of my questions that I had down already. So that's amazing. So I'm just gonna go rewind a bit and go over some points that you said that I really wanna highlight because I think that's one of the most important thing as a newbie, even if you've been in here for a long time and I think if you've been in here for a long time, especially you kind of lose that um, you kind of have to remind yourself, right? So what you said about ignorance on fire. So when I came into this business, I was exactly like you came in running guns blazing. I didn't know anything about the business, which looking back, I wish I took more time to learn, which I'm pretty sure you probably think the same too. But, you know, it was literally ignorance on fire. Just like, what do you need? Ask the people, hey, this is what I'm on. This is what you should get onto. exactly what you're doing. Um, and I think that is what really got us going at the beginning, the momentum, right? Um, running with passion, exactly like what you said. How you sound, you guys, is going to be so much more important than what you say to people. We can sit here and we can talk about the three steps, the DFT, the scientific facts, what's in it, what's not in it, how it's going to help you. But you can literally say one line and sound so excited did. And I think that's what we did that helped us grow so fast. Literally, we sat there we're like, dude, this stuff changed our lives. Like you need to get on this ASAP, right? Like how you sound is going to be so much more important than what you say. And um, like you, I grew 80K in the first three months, I think, of my business. And like you said, you know, the faster you um you grow is also you can fall right back down to where you're supposed to be and i think that's where a lot of people forget you know as i grew to an 80k within the first three months i grew i dropped back down to 12k a couple months after but you i had to kind of remind myself like was i ready to lead an 80k team without knowing even what's this how to run a business without even knowing how to put on a zoom call without even knowing how to kind of instill that belief and vision into a new person coming in and um what you said about jackie how she was um she was telling you about you know vegas and how um you know you can be the first that's what leaders that are very very um seasoned in this business know how to do right they know how to paint a vision and they know how to cast kind of an image into someone's head where they can instill belief even more right and that's what she's so good at doing and that's what we all need to kind of do as well if we do want to grow a team and everything right so I'm going to tell you this, um, Eleni is one of the leaders on our team that has the best community that she has gotten together for her team. Um, you do weekly team call for your team, which I never, ever asked you to. You just do it on your own. And when I get on these team calls with you and I'm just listening you guys, her team is literally crying on every fucking Zoom, like just bawling their eyes out because they're so grateful and they're so happy where they are, regardless of how much they've grown, how much they've lost, regardless of how much they've grown, like, and how much money they're making. It's not like her team is really not here for the money. They're here for the community, right? So let's kind of like let people in on how your girl continuing to keep such a tight knit community how people are crying on their Zooms every time I'm like hopping on and how much they just love being a part of the team that you have built for yourself. So let's let's start there because as a leader, I know I keep talking, but I'm just gonna keep talking. But as a leader, I know that, you know, you really have to take care of the people that you're bringing in because they can sense bullshit like right away. Either you're in here for the money or you're in here to help other people. So let's start with that. Like, how are you growing such an amazing community that they're so tight and they're not here for the money? They want to keep staying for whatever you're doing, right? You're asking me how? 
Yeah. Like, what do you do? Like, do you see them every single week? Like, like, cause I know what you do. I've been with you. I've traveled with you for like a month on end. I know exactly what you do, but I'm not sure people that are on here, they're probably like, well, how do I grow my team? How what, do I have to, how often am I talking to them? You know, how often am I seeing them? Cause you do a lot of in-person like stuff as well. So kind of tell people like everything about that. Yeah. I mean, you know, like one thing that I think I've also learned from you too, is that we become the leaders that we either had or didn't have, right? Like we look for the leadership that we didn't have or didn't have, or we had, or we didn't have. And for me, I just knew that I wanted to be a part of a team or created an environment where people felt like one, they were recognized, not necessarily for their accolades, but two, because of the how consistent they are. And for me, I, I actually don't see my team that often in person. Uh, we do meet, you know, uh, once every month and more frequently, depending on the demand and stuff. But one thing that I always want people to know is that you're never here in this business alone. And so one thing that we do on our weekly team Zooms is overcoming objections. Like at the end of every call, what I do is I'm like, okay, like you guys, like let's talk about objections we had. And it can be in your personal life. It could be in your business. It could be maybe like you did not talk to a customer or talk about, you know, someone, something or uh, something that happened uh, with a promoter, like I overcome them with each other because I want them to know that we all have the same struggles, right? We all come from the same struggles, but we can overcome them together. And two, um, I think just like, you know, creating that culture, people work for people, they don't work for companies, right? And if you create the culture that you want, and you you see people for who they are, a lot of my one on ones were talking about like, what's going on? Like, again, same thing when I hired a coach, it, it pointed a lot of blind spots to me that I didn't realize that I had that were blocking me in my business. And so when I'm um, on my one on ones, I take a lot of time to just kind of dig deep, like what's going on in your other life too, right? Like, talk to me, I'm not, I'm not just, you know, a mentor or, or your boss or anything like that I'm actually far from that I want to know like what's going on and I I actually want everybody on my team to see growth um in their own ways whatever that means to them and so um again something that I apply from like Ange too is that you know she always just leads me to the next step you have to understand your people and why they're here not everyone is here for the same reasons if you can kind of like knock out like um the transparency of like what people expect, you're kind of uh, also eliminating that, um, the disappointment for yourself too, if they're not here for the same reasons, right? Um, another thing too is having non-negotiables. I have non-negotiables for what I'm looking for uh, in a promoter, right? I don't just enroll anyone. I don't enroll, all, I also don't even just enroll customers. Um, like I wanna know your commitment level. That's one of the questions that are in my like questionnaire survey when people are like filling it out. It's like, what is your commitment level to your change? Because if you're not committed, I'm actually gonna be like, hey, you know what? It seems like you are still trying to convince yourself and uh, that's okay. I just wanna give you some more time to be sure in your decision. And then they're like, what? Like, you don't wanna sign me? And they're like, and it almost creates like a, okay, like she's serious. Like she really needs to know whether or not like I'm taking this as a serious thing. And it, it does, it's, it's instilled um, kind of a sense of urgency in people to know like, hey, like my time is valued and my my energy and my efforts are also valued. So I, I know my promoters too, like, like, look, we can, I'm, I'm going to be here to lead you, but at the same time, like I need you to show up too. And if you don't show up, like I'm not, I'm going to, you know, lead you in the best way that I can, but you, you've got to put in the work too. I love that because it is true. Like you want to give people the best of you and you want to give them the best experience ever. But if they're not willing to change, like you can't force someone, right? You can lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink it, right? So I love that you do that. Um, we do have five minutes left. So I do want to ask you um, about um, signing customers and promoters. Are you more belly to belly or do you make, work mainly on social media? I know the answer, but let's give everyone the answer. <laughs> Um, I do a little bit of both. I think in the beginning, you have to you have to really understand to change with the seasons, especially with um, society, right? Like during the pandemic, social media was everything and it was a game changer because everybody was on their phones and at home but as you have seen like you know people are going back to work and things like that I've also had the shift with that and so <clears throat> even like before when we first came in the business I think like reels and tiktok was still kind of like 
booming and it's still growing and just really learning like with the times like what is relevant right now um i do a kind of a combination of both i think right now a lot of it is belly to belly um and two it's also um you know being strong in my referrals list like i create really strong relationships with my current customers or uh reoccurring auto ship customers because you guys referrals are the easiest customer you can have you already have conviction from somebody else who knows them and you don't have to go over there convincing them like, hey, I think you should try this product when they obviously see somebody who is already so convinced of loving it. Um, it just eliminates so much like pressure off of yourself. And uh, yeah, I think utilizing both, I use social media more as like evidence that my business is growing. Um, and again, it's also a, a highlight reel, but uh, I think right now my season is like belly to belly a lot, but again, I'm just always changing with whatever comes and I'm open to growing. Amy asks, or Elaine asks, um, what do you say to get your referrals? So for my customers who are thriving with me, I tell them every day that you uh, leave the house, I need you to wear your patch that someone can see it. You can't wear it underneath your clothes. You got to show it um, or so wear something, uh, plan your outfit around your patch. And so I tell them to show the patch and I tell them when somebody asks you what that is, I want you to get their phone number and their name and that I will contact them for you and give them more information later. Holy goodness, I have never heard that before, but I love it because it makes so much sense. So much sense. Um, that is amazing. So um, I just want to kind of say, a bit, add a bit more to that. So I train my team, you guys. I'm like, you know, there's four ways that you can really, really grow your network and your business here, right? Number one, obviously, is through social media, right? What Eleni used, what I use. Like most of our business is through social me media. So we can reach further and wider to anyone and everyone, right? Number three is customer referral. Number two is customer referrals. Exactly what Eleni does. Number three belly to belly like I do a lot of belly to belly because I too sit at home all day long and unless I am going out there to meet people face to face I'm not going to be meeting anyone right and then number four is events locals you know doing those type of things to grow your network right so I say why not do it all you know we we ask people hey how are you growing your network and they'll give you one or two answers why not just do everything and anything because if you are really serious about this business and you really wanted to get to the level where you see people that you're so inspired by, I can guarantee you they probably do everything. And when they do all of that one thing, they probably move on to something else because we cannot just be on social media all day. We cannot just be talk, going out there every single day and talking to new people. You know, it, we can't get burnt out like that, but you know, try everything that you can, right? So I love that. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, one last thing, we have one minute left. Um, if you can go back to the beginning, if you can go back to the very beginning, knowing what you know now and you can change something about your business, one thing about your business that can, you know, change how things are now, do you have anything or what would it be? Organization. <laughs> mm. um, I think you and I are very similar in the sense that we're very red personalities, like we're one very passion driven, but also we're very blue in the sense that we um, go after incentive and we love the fun. And so for me, I think that if I had more organization, one, if you guys don't have like a notebook to keep track of your customers, where they're at in their, you know, um, in their Thrive experience themselves, or, you know, just a list, I have lists, endless lists now, like a sample list for who was in my customers list, who's in my potential customers list, um, having dates scheduled out, like what things are, you know, running auto ship dates or days that I need to follow up or just having like an hourly breakdown of like what I'm going to do in my day. You guys, nobody's telling you what to do in this business. And that's the hard part. A lot of you guys are used to that. You guys are used to someone telling you what to do. And so you have to stay in that mind of creativity. And so sometimes, um, actually the more I'm more productive like taking an hour or two away and just kind of being still and just trying to like brainstorm and then acting versus just doing without a goal because you guys know that if you guys don't have a goal while you're working you're not working towards a goal like you were just working <laughs> so um have goals have why understand like what you're trying to do what you're trying to achieve and give yourself tangible tasks to like do to complete that yeah. And honestly, being organized saves you so, so much time because you and I, we have so much time freedom and we do travel so much. So it really is hard to 
be, you know, in that mindset of like, hey, I got to do this, do this, unless you are writing down your stuff, right? So I 100% agree with you. And if I can go back as well, I would probably <laughs> change that as well, right? So there you go, you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in the last hour. Happy payday, you guys. Go make your payday post. Thank you so much, Eleni. I hope you guys loved your story because I absolutely did. I hope you guys enjoyed me as a host. You know, I try to bring it a bit fun. And then me and Eleni are so blue, so we're just, you know, doing it with to each other right so um have a great day you guys happy tuesday happy transformation tuesday um post your transformation pics post other people's transformation pics share what this payday has done for you or is going to do for you and just get take people through the journey exactly what like what elaine did right because stories sell facts tell right is that the, the word <laughs> i don't know but you know what i mean so anyways have a good day i'll have this recording sent out um see you guys next week Bye, Eleni.